My name is Lubaina Himid. Well, I guess my very first inclination was to achieve something that could be inside and outside, to be outside and rem be reminded of other outsides, the inside and almost turn those inside spaces into outside spaces. But another thing was that I was, I desperately wanted to find a boat, a big old fishing boat that nobody wanted anymore, to take it apart, to put it back together, perhaps inside and outside some of these spaces and rebuild it in a different way, a, a way that was perhaps special to me. Um, and, uh, but I'm, I'm, it, it wasn't exactly possible, but I think that um, really strong desire to do that then pushed and led and formed so many of the ideas that have come together in the show. Yeah, it's really, really important to me to, to set up a situation where I'm talking to an artist every day if I can. I like to listen to what other people have on their minds, projects that they might want to do or really dreams that they might have. Sometimes it's really uh, very easy to see how maybe two of us could make that dream come true together. And sometimes you hear something an artist says and wish that you'd had that thought yourself. <laughs> You know, and so that collaborative work is very much about balance, about exchange, about hearing extra things that the artist may not say to you in the course of um, dinner or shopping, but that will say to you in the course of, say, me talking about what I really want to do and they're talking about what they would really like to do. But then that sort of, mm, that way of exchanging ideas, then very often, especially uh, with Magda, then makes something that actually is more exciting sometimes than either of us might do. So we do exciting things separately, but then we know also we can do this sort of, I think we're kind of daring each other quite a lot when we're working together. And also, I'm, I'm very bad at saying, sometimes I'm very frightened. So in my mind, I might be saying, oh no, I'm too afraid to do that. But I don't want to seem afraid. So I go, oh yes, that would be a super <laughs> Hmm, Let's do that and, and let, um, let her go with it because I know that I'm in safe hands to then go along. And I think that's very much what happened with Zanzibar. In a way, to, start, to talk about Plan B here in Sharjah, I have to sort of go back to how we arrive at Plan B. And as I said, I was really desperate to bring boats into the story of my relationship with this place, with Sharjah, and my relationship with this world in that I was born in Zanzibar and I guess I haven't been back very often but there was something about being here that gave me some of the sense of myself that I felt when I was there um, and the idea of being able to bring boats into the story became very important. So I gathered boats from exhibition that I'd made in the early uh, 2000s, uh, boats that I had painted especially for the Sharjah Biennial uh, to be turned into shop signs boats that I had drawn very meticulously on dark winter days in Preston, where I work in the north of England. 
uh, sketches and big paintings. And I wanted to gather this armada, if you like, to help move the narrative along, move the audience along, give everybody a, a sense of uh, their own individual selves and our collective state. I think boats to me are places of work, places of rescue, places to live, places for fun, places of deep tragedy and deep horror, uh, places to escape to, places to escape from. I see them as temporary, moving homes, if you like. Uh, so the L-shaped gallery is in a sense itself a watery place. And you can choose, as you go through the L-shaped gallery, you can choose a boat that you would like to be in, or that you would like to remember, or a boat that reminds you of somewhere else, a dream or a memory, or perhaps a journey that you took, or someone in your family maybe took. And you go through uh, the gallery, the L-shaped gallery, you turn a corner, you may be reminded of the shop signs that you perhaps just glimpsed in the streets of Sharjah several months ago. But then you turn into this magnificent gallery that's beautifully lit, beautifully square. And it, the, the thing I want to happen is that what happens to me every time I go into this installation that we made together, all of us, the curator, the, the team, Magda, the um, participants in the sound, all together, we made a space that is both safe, you've gone on the journey through the gallery in your boat, and dangerous. You have to leave that space and go back on another journey out. So this space of Plan B is a place and a space of stories, of narratives, of texts, of histories, of conflict and of escape. The texts, however, in the paintings are written in English and they're written as a kind of call and response. If you read the text, you can, you're given, you're offered a place that begins as dangerous, but has the potential for ending safely. You're given a painting also that's next to each one, that's part of the diptych, that is an empty space but a space where people clearly are moving towards or moving away. Even I don't know after all these years whether the rooms that are in those paintings are safe spaces or dangerous spaces. But because the, the texts were in English, Magda and I wanted to give a sense of welcome and a sense of belonging and a sense of sharing with any audiences that may visit here in Sharjah. And the thought that we could ask uh, participants who would speak in their own uh, dialect, their own uh, interpretation of um, the Arabic language, capturing phrases, perhaps, reading the entire text of one. Then Magda had the idea to weave in and out of that the sound of the sea. So we have in this libretto that was made especially for this installation, as a collaborative project, you can read the English, you can hear the Arabic, you can remember your own journey. You can think about journeys that you might make. You can sit in a beautifully designed central circle 
uh, on a specially designed uh, seating arrangement that's there for you to feel safe or perhaps listen and remember and perhaps then want to leave. But the entire room is, if you like, a, a concert, a, a symphony of poetry, of the music of the sea, of exchange between one set of people and another. And it gives you the chance somehow to be able to move around the room and to just sit. But when you've spent some time there, you then maybe move around the room again, and then you leave. And for me, this is probably one of the most exciting uh, journeys that I think I've ever managed because it was done as an entire kind of team effort uh, that I've ever managed to achieve in any gallery. I'm, and I'm incredibly grateful for that. I think one of the most special things about the, in a sense, the, the series of collaborations that this exhibition is, is that none of them could have come about without us listening to each other and without Magda teaching me how to listen, how to listen to cities, how to listen to buildings. And I think I always listened to people, but I'm not sure I always listened to the, to the bigger picture. And I certainly am not entirely sure that I listened to myself very well. Um, and so that, um, that inner listening that she very much encourages one to do, either as a participant or in the exhibitions themselves, it, it has made me very nervous. You know, I, I do, I'm not sure always that I want to go there. Um, but I think that, I think audiences, I want everyone who comes to this show to really feel, which is absolutely true, that they are the most important person in this show. That their story, their family, their dreams can come true.